Hey everybody, welcome back again. Welcome to the next episode of Installing Orthanc. So you'll remember last time we got quite far. We got to a point where we had a working server and we could load images um, into it and store them on the drive. Then we could open them in the web-based viewer and it was pretty satisfying. Well, this episode, I want to just step away from the um, installation to a little canvas where we can sketch out a bit of architecture about what we've created and have a think about where this needs to go to become a more robust service. So I'm going to start by drawing this box to represent the virtual private server, which we purchased and set up. So you'll remember it was a one gigabyte of RAM, 25 gigabytes of SSD storage, and it was a single instance of a server. Now I'm just going to draw a couple of little circles over here to represent the users of this server, as in the people who are visiting it uh, in a web browser. And it's a fair assumption that there will be many more of them than there will be the servers. So that's what we would call a sort of multi-tenant application. More people uh, than one will use it at the same time. And they will be both sending and receiving data. And you remember that at the moment that happens on port 8042, although that's very unconventional and it's something that we're going to fix. Now, when they make a request, it comes to an application which is sitting on our server and that application is the Orthanc service. Now, the Orthanc service has a, a couple of other things uh, going on. So, it has a database and the default database that it uses out of the box with absolutely no modifications is a file system based database called SQL Lite. The other thing that happens is when we both when we upload images, they get stored to the drive and when those images are accessed, they get read from the folder on the drive. So those images are stored in DICOM format um, as binary images, and they do take quite a lot of disk space up. So they're like the parts that we've got that we need to consider. So at the moment, what could go wrong? Well, if we had too many users accessing the application, perhaps this Orthanc process may not handle them all because it's not a dedicated web server. The SQLite database is renowned for not performing that well with multi-tenant uh, reads and writes, um, and so it may struggle. It also runs on exactly the same computer, the VPS, in terms of processing power and disk storage as all the other things. So it may get slowed down by that. Now the next thing is um, particularly demanding, which is the storage and retrieval of the images, which uses, um, which activates the disk a lot and also sends the images through memory as they are rendered to be sent through the Orthanc application back to the browser. And that's going to be um, amplified every time we have more than one user accessing it at once. So we need to separate out these problems. So let's think about the web server issue. So what we can do in that instance is we can place um, a proxy server in front of it. So an application which is a proper web server, which is very used to dealing with lots of requests at once and sending them on to an application for a response. And the one that we'll use for that is called Nginx, which is total industry standard. Now, we don't want to use this port 8042 because that is unconventional. Um, we're going to use a more common web port such as 80 or 443. Um, 
and we'll just put those there for now. Now the great thing about um, the thing about port 443 is it's the one that you get SSL certificates serving apps on, so we will be putting an SSL certificate there to secure our inbound and outbound traffic. So Nginx is going to receive the requests. It's much better at handling lots of requests. And then it is going to proxy the request to port 8042 on the server to communicate to Authank. The next thing we need to address is the database. So we're going to quite simply swap out the database with a more robust one called Postgres SQL. Now, Postgres Now Postgres is a, a much more robust um, database. It's pretty standard for web applications and it can handle a high volume of concurrent traffic with reads and writes. It has sophisticated queuing and, and things like that built in. Um, so we'll, we'll swap out with that. Now, what you could do is you could move that to a different server so that it offloads the computing power of this server but actually for now, I'm just gonna leave it on the same one. Now let's move on to the final piece of the puzzle, the DICOM images, which for me is probably gonna be the most difficult thing. I do want to get them off this small server and onto some dedicated storage. Now dedicated storage can take different forms. So it could be that we literally just add on a, another server which has the job of doing storage and we move the DICOM images over to that. Uh, it's in the it's behind that one isn't it? You get the idea. Now that would just mean another server to manage and stuff and that seems like a bit of a hassle. So the next thing we could do is we could add on to this something called block storage which um, the server provider DigitalOcean offers and that will just be like an additional cost depending on how much we add. That's probably a very good option here. The other thing we could do, especially if this ever got very large, would be to add in a cloud storage and that would be something like Amazon S3. I would find this quite daunting to set up, although I note that there are storage adapters for Authank that allow Amazon S3, Google Cloud Platform, and, and maybe some others. So those are the elements that we're gonna pick through in the next individual videos. I'm gonna be learning here as much as the rest of you, but um, let's see where we can get to with this. I'll see you in the next episode.